Hello and welcome back to At The Table. This week we have uh, some really amazing covers. A good bit of Spider-Man and Batman, so a good bit of Marvel and DC. Shocker. Yeah, but a ton of great variants. Yeah, there's some good variants this week. Yep. So stay tuned and let's talk comics. Yeah, so welcome back to At The Table. I'm Jake. And I'm Jason, father and son team back at the table talking comics. Yep, and this week is our weekly comic haul. Yeah, this was a good pick. I feel like, and we got a lot of good covers, I think, this week. And I feel like the last couple we had a lot of great reads, but I didn't have as many favorite covers as I do this week. Yeah. So you know what's first? Carpool Carpool pick! pick! So what was the one book that you could not wait to get back to the house to, to read? Thor number 15! I'm kind of a little surprised, because we did have symbiote books this week, so tell us why you had to jump right into Thor and even chose Thor over some stuff that i Because Thor was off for a while, and it's a Donny Cates book, we don't have any of You're occurrence. missing Donny Cates, because you're, you're not really reading crossover yet. Yeah. So you need your Cates fix. Mm-hmm. So tell us, without going into spoilers, go ahead and tell us about it. How much did you like it? Uh, it was really good. I believe it started a new arc in the story. Um, the ending was really good in this. Um, I'm excited to see where this goes. So this is picking up. They kind of hinted on it as we closed out the last arc with Thor, right? Mjolnir's kind of on the fritz. Mm-hmm. So you think that's going to be what this centers on? or Yeah, something even... about it. Okay. So highly recommended? Yeah, for sure. Awesome. So with the carpool pick mm-hmm. out of the way... Let's uh, think back to last week for a little bit. Now, I know I fell behind. It was a crazy week with you're getting into mountain bike practice. You were away at the, the beach for some of the week, and we did a lot of things at the house, so I didn't do as much reading as I'd like. But I still got a few in, and I know you did a bit of reading before you took off and, and left me for the for a few days. What was your favorite from last week? My favorite from last week was Extreme Carnage Alpha number 1. So why don't you tell us a little bit about that book and why why you ended up picking it as your favorite. Okay, so this book mainly centers around uh, Flash, Agent Thompson, um, Agent Venom Thompson. Um, but it centers around him and Extreme Carnage and this like anti-symbiote rally type thing that's going on right now after Null invaded. Uh, it was really good. I really don't want to spoil any more with this book, but it was really good if you really like the Null. Uh, this is a great book going, like, aftermath of that. I would definitely recommend this book. Awesome. So, like I said, I didn't get to read as many, and I'm not necessarily sure that this was the best book. Um, I always talk about that with movies and stuff. There's the best, and then there's what I enjoyed. If I'm going over purely what I enjoyed the most last week, I'm going to have to pick the Masters of the Universe Revelations, number one, largely for the all the childhood n- nostalgia and it was a it was an enjoyable book. I like the art. I like the story. I haven't done, I haven't watched anything or read anything around He-Man for many many years, and it instantly took me back to when I was a kid playing with those action figures. So I got a lot of enjoyment out of that, and I'm going to stay on the series. And you're going to read it one way or the other. I know you didn't get to it before you took off, but you're either going to like it or you're going to make fun of me. So good solid picks, I think, last week. For sure. Let's jump into this week's. Yep, uh, I will give you the honor of going first. Okay. I'm going to pick, um, in no particular order, I'm going to go with uh, Straczynski's Moss, number two, two of six. Uh, it seems like this one, I don't, it feels like I've read number one a while ago. I'd have to go back and look and see how long it was between issues. But I really enjoyed issue number one and the premise, and it left on a big cliffhanger. So I kind of want to see, I want to jump right in and see where this picks up. But this book has us in a world where this a plague had kind of infected, wiped out a bunch of people, and some of the survivors are sort of affected by this thing. They can basically manifest powers, but at the cor- the cost of their life. So, like, when they decide to ascend, or I can't remember what, exactly what they call it in this book, but when they decide to accept their powers and see what it is, they only get six months to live. So it's, it's kind of, you know, they burn out quickly. So we're following the main character here. She feels the call, and we're, we're running up to her, deciding to accept her powers. And the first issue basically ended with a big ceremony, her up on stage, and we don't know what exactly how it manifested. So I'm this was an interesting premise. I like the art. I like the story. I'm eager to see where this goes. Okay, so for my first pick, in no particular order, it is <laughs> Extreme Carnage Scream Part 2 of 8. Um, so Scream is one of my favorite symbiotes. It's really good. This ending and the story was amazing. 
It was just, it was really good. So you've already, you already snuck in and read this one. Yes, I've read this one. So definitely, is it, are you getting now that the whole, you know, Kate's is off Venom and then all things behind us, are you still getting your symbiote fix? Mm -hmm. Same quality of the stuff that we were enjoying with Kate's? Yeah. Awesome. All right, so I'm going to pick a series that I've read most of the, I'm probably about half of the issues up. Uh, I'm going to go with Silver Coin number four. And there's one big reason for this. This is an anthology series that basically follows this kind of a monkey's paw type of thing. This, this exactly what it says, the silver coin that it makes it, the people who have it sort of get their wish, but it always ends up kind of burning them in some way. This is a Jeff Lemire uh, take on this anthology. And I think it goes way into the future and, it, and tells another one of these stories about someone happening on the coin. I'm in as soon as I saw the Jeff Lemire. So that moved it to the top of my pile. Okay, so for my second book of the week, we are going to go with Challenge of the Super Sons, number four. Super Sons was amazing. It was one of the first series that we went back and read. Um, it was really, really great. This story has been really, really great. Um, the yeah, ending was good. it's been fun to be back with these characters. Yeah. It's definitely a lighter tone than some of the other stuff. Although DC's been more hopeful and like brighter, for lack of a better word, lately. But this is a, definitely one of our favorites. So it continues to impress. Yeah. I don't know how many more issues of this we have, but I wish I wish it would go on longer. Yeah. So highly recommend or yeah. Highly right? recommend. Awesome. And a great a great uh, parent kid read, right? Yep. So and for my final pick, there's um this is a weekly book, so we had the first issue out uh, last week, and that is Skybound. Uh, we got number two this week, and I'm picking it primarily because there it's a Stillwater story in here, and that is one of my favorite books by one of our favorite writers, Chip Zdarsky. Mm -hmm. Love that series so far, so any little extra bit of that I can get, I'm all in. So some kind of different picks for me this week, um, but some fun stuff, I think, to read. So for my last pick, it is going to be Spider-Man, Spider-Shadow number four. Uh, so if any of you don't know the uh, premise behind this, it is essentially um, if Spider-Man kept the Venom symbiote, it's like a what-if story that Chip Zdarsky is writing. It has been amazing so far. Much darker than typical Spider-Man. Yeah. Even more dark than the normal Venom stuff that Cates was writing, I think. But it's still really good. It is really good. And what if seems to be the big new thing. They're officially bringing it back. I mean, this is a what-if story. We're going to get more what-if yep. in the Marvel Universe. Have you seen the I don't know if you've seen the trailer yet. I've seen the trailer. The What If cartoon that's coming. Yeah, it looks good. Uh, it looks so good. So I, I really like, I've always liked those What Ifs. I like the standalone stories and because it's fun to always imagine, well, what if this had happened? Mm -hmm. Or what if, great story. So yeah. I think this is wrapping up soon. Have you finished this one yet or just? I have not finished. This is the one pick that I've not finished. Okay, so I'm. we'll have to read that and then you can hand it directly to me because this has been one of our favorite reads. I like how... I do like the darkness, but I also like it's... Venom feels different in this book. Like, mm -hmm. it's... He feels more menacing um, the way he's interfaced with Parker. Yep. So, I, I'm really enjoying it. I love seeing Chip spin on the... So, that is our top three picks for the week each. Let's go in with wanna some variants. Dig into some variants. These are some of your favorite things, aren't they? Yeah, is that the whole pile? No, no. That's just up to this index card right here. Oh, okay. So, go ahead and take the pile. Now, if I'm going to be honest, I might be a little biased, but this is my favorite cover. <laughs> Give everyone. I bet people are going to guess. If... Uh, yeah, I bet people can guess. This is the Scotty Young Scream variant. Uh, it's a symbiote variant, and Scotty Young did it. That's basically all I need to say on why I like it. One of your favorite cover artists and one of your favorite symbiotes. So yep. Definitely no-brainer. So that one's going to... I have a feeling that one's going to get put in a hard case and probably end up on your wall of fame. Yeah, so let's get in with, uh, this is one of the incentives. I believe we got two, uh, but this is the uh, Sinister War, I believe. Sinister uh, War Virgin. number one. Yep, and that is the Gary Frank 1 in 50 Virgin. And this is definitely a contender with one of my favorite covers of the week. It just, the colors pops. There's so many iconic heroes and villains. It just, I love the cover. Yep. So... That was, uh, I think it's been a little bit since we grabbed a 1 in 50. We yeah. There just haven't been that many until this week. So, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, I believe this is our other incentive. That is a 1 in 25. This is Spider-Man, Spider-Shadow. Uh, I actually really, really, really like this cover. And I think the artist on that one is Christian Ward. I do too. And this this kind of points out that different that, look for yeah. Venom, right? Mm -hmm. He looks more spidery. 
Yeah. And it's just very menacing. So I think it really has captured the feeling of this book. So that is a, definitely a fun variant. So this one is a shocker. I actually really, really like this cover. This is the Champions Number Number Eight um, Peach Mocha cover that has. Um, it's one of the quote anime, and I'll do that in yep. air quotes because I don't feel. Like I don't feel like it's anime. It's super over anime style, but we've liked that series. I think we might have missed a Spider-Man. I got to follow up with uh, John, but I think it was a Spider-Man we missed that so we have to go back and grab. But this is a great cover. Yeah. It's just another example of, she's just killing it recently with some of the different stuff that she's doing. So I guess we are slowly being converted in the Peach fans. Okay, so next up, H is for Haha, ha, issue number six. Yep, Haha ha, number six. I think this is the big issue. I think this is the end of this miniseries, but I have a feeling we're going to see more of it. And this is the one where I believe it finally crosses over with Ice Cream Man. And I think this story is about a character that we first saw back in one of the Ice Cream Man, uh, Ice Cream Man stories. So the Dr. Seuss covers are kind of fun. I haven't picked up all of them, but especially with this being the last in the mini series, I wanted to grab it. Okay, so next up, Seven Secrets number 10. And looking at this, this is a amazing cover. And I think this is, this is the variant cover, and we'll show the A cover, which I didn't like nearly as much, but that is the variant uh, by John Boy Myers. And I think it's just, it captures the action and what we love about this series so much. So that very nearly, I tried to pick some different stuff from my picks this week, but that book is always so great. It, it could easily be on our top list every time that it's out. Yep, so next up, uh, Spider-Woman number 13. Yep, and we're getting a whole bunch of these kind of cat-centric covers. Mm -hmm. And let me see, this one is Steve McNiven, I believe. I like that. Of the two iron, or the two cap. cap covers, that I think this is my favorite. That one's not bad, but I like this one. Yeah, I do too. Uh, so the next one is Iron Man number 10. This is another one of those cap covers. Uh, I believe this is John Cassidy, I think, did the cover for this one. He looks very brooding yeah. in this. So, interesting cover. We'll probably grab a, the bulk of these unless we just really don't like one. Mm -hmm. um, not a huge fan of some of the, I, I don't know actually what to think of some of the stuff that's going on in the cat book itself, but I like these covers and generally I really like the character. So we will definitely add those to the collection. Mm -hmm. So with the variants out of the way, let's get started with our main haul this week. Yep, so I'm going to let you get started with our first book. All right, I'm actually going to pick this one, which very easily could have gone in the variants, but I didn't, we didn't pick up the A cover because I thought I wasn't a huge fan of the A cover. But that but one the looks... Flash Annual, number one. Thank you, sir. This was, uh, I just love this cover. It's another cardstock cover and it just pops. And it's everything that I'm, I'm enjoying about these characters and DC at the moment. And I believe the artist on that one was Brett Booth. And yes, I have a note card back here cheating because I always feel bad when I, I'm not able to get the artist out on all these awesome variant covers. So next up we have Ninjak number one, which essentially was just an impulse purchase because it is a ninja and a super spy. Awesome cover. That's I, We saw that on the wall, or I saw it on the wall, and just went ahead and threw it into this week's pile. And it's also a valiant book. I'm looking forward. I'm hoping it's at least a fun popcorn flick sort of vibe from this book. But we'll report back. Who knows? Maybe it'll make next week's faves. Yep. Okay, so next up we have Justice League Last Ride number three. Yep, and the whole reason we got on this, well, we are enjoying the DC stuff way more than we had been since they kind of rebooted things again. But Chip Zdarsky book, we've got the Justice League in the future. This is a point in time where they had kind of splintered and are having to come back together to solve solve an issue as a team once more. So I'm behind. I read the first issue, really liked it, and it's Chip Zdarsky, so I know it's going to be a great story. Next up, um, we have Dr. Afra number 12. Yep, Dr. Afra number 12. I'm a few issues behind on this, but I liked, uh, I picked this up. Started picking up Dr. Aphra and some of the other Star Wars titles once The Mandalorian was done and I need my Star Wars fix. It's been a fun book. I need to circle back around and do a Star Wars binge and catch up. Okay, so next up we have Star Wars War of the Bounty Hunters, number two. Yep, I'm sticking with the main title. I'm enjoying that. I'm not all in for, I can't remember, it's like 35 crazy titles or something. I think it was like 36, but yeah, that's insane. Yeah, I decided to tap out. I was not... I had a little that. bit of fatigue from events after. As much as I loved Null, <laughs> it was a lot. And then before that, we tried to do X of Swords, and that wore me out. So I just, I just don't have a big event in me right now. But I still wanted to get at least the main story, and I'm, that'll be enjoyable enough. Yep. Next up, Infer Frontier 2 of 6. This is uh, 
more great DC. I hear nothing but good things. I am behind. I did not read number one, but I know I'm going to really enjoy it when I do. So I'm looking forward to getting caught up and picking this book up. Next up, Sinister War number one. Uh, so I will admit, this is actually a book that I've read beforehand. Uh, this book was really good. Um, surprised me a lot. So is this our getting back on the main Spider-Man wagon? I would say so. It's good. Really good. I just hope... I'm hearing a lot of rumors and stuff about what they might do, and we know that uh, Ben Riley's coming back. One of, you won't remember, but he was one of the clones. I know. Back, also, you do know. Yeah. So I, I guess I don't give you nearly enough credit for doing your homework. I'm just hoping they don't go someplace like really... I just don't want Peter dead again. Like, I don't know. Like, let the man have some happiness for a little bit. But I am really interested to see how the stuff with Mephisto... And the one more day thing that's sort of been lingering in the background for a long time plays out. I'm really hoping there's a great payout there. Next up, we have Champions number eight. Uh, this is the kind of like pixelated cover with all the characters on the. Yeah, they're, they're like iPhone I like icons. I do too. Yeah. That's like I said. There's so many great covers that weren't there weren't even variants. That Sinister War Spider-Man, the regular A cover is great. This cover is great. It's a really good week for covers. Yep. Next up, Black Hammer Visions number six. Yep. One of your mom's favorite books is all the Black yeah. Hammer stuff. I am going to finally catch up with this at some point. I keep saying that, but I keep getting further and further behind as our pool is gross. But I know this is great stuff, so i got to get caught up. Next up, Aliens Aftermath, number one. I enjoyed the, um, the other Alien series. It wasn't my favorite book, but it's been a while since I've done or watched any of the Alien movies or kind of jump back into that world so I, I enjoyed it for what it was like I said not my favorite book but a fun read so I'm hoping to at least get more out of the same from this one so next up beyond the breach number one I think this one and this is uh by aftershock and I think I'm gonna read it make sure it's kosher for you but I feel like this one might be one that we could enjoy together this one is surprise sort of a apocalyptic sort of thing we've got a story where this family it's just kind of doing their thing, and then this breach hits, and like all these bizarre creatures start pouring in. You've got monsters and everything kind of between this family and trying to get back home. And I remember reading recently, I don't, one of the websites that I read pretty regularly, was the author was talking about some of the inspiration for and then some of the crazy stuff they were doing in this book. And I think it kind of harkens back to some of the, some of the, just the crazy fantastical movies that I watched as a kid. So getting a pretty good vibe from that one. So, next up, Wave X number four. Yep, and I am behind in this, but I decided I was going to jump on it because I really like Nightcrawler, and I was going to try X-Men something. So, at this point, I, don't, I know this is, I think this is just a mini. I might just wait till it finishes up and then just sit down and read the whole thing. Okay, so, uh, Rangers of the Divide number three. I feel like your sister would really like this cover since the sort of owl-like creature in the beginning. Yep. So this one is, uh, I really liked issue one. I started to read two for whatever reason I didn't finish it. Um, not that it wasn't good. I think I was just really tired or something. But I need to pick that up too and, and read this. But we've got sort of a fantasy sci-fi thing of a, a team of young rangers uh, that are kind of called into action. So it's, I've been enjoying it. It's, uh, at least the bit that I've read has been really fun. Next up, Seven Secrets, number 10. And this was the A cover. I really like that variant cover. Wait, for some reason, this I just don't dig this cover. I mean, it's not bad per se, but it just, I don't know, wasn't my thing. But the story, I know this is going to be a great read. And like I said, it easily could have been on either of our top three lists for the week. But I think we were trying to mix it up and, and jump into some other stuff. But definitely a, a great book. And if you haven't jumped into Seven Secrets, you do yourself a favor and get on board. Next up, Iron Man number 10. Yep, and basically, uh, last month I had just decided that it's been too long since we were reading an Iron Man title, so mm -hmm. that's why we jumped into this and, and trying to get back into the swing of things and see what's going on with one of our favorite superheroes of all time. Next up, Carnage, Black, White, and Blood number four. Yeah, these books have been a lot of fun. I think it was, a, there's so many great books this week. This is another one that could have easily been on our top three. Is, is most looked forward to just because of how much fun this book is. We're getting yep. lots of carnage and lots of symbiotes, so if I was worried that we were going to go through a symbiote law post-Kate's leaving Venom, definitely not the case. We've got a lot going on in that world. Okay, now we got Detective Comics 1039. This is the uh, cardstock cover. 
I really like the V covers for these. Yeah, they're always amazing. I'm behind in Batman, but I need to catch up. It's just with so much Batman, it's so hard to keep up with it all. It's just bad. It's maybe it's the only thing that might be worse than Spider-Man. At least gives it a run for its money. So we will catch up at some point and just spend an afternoon binging and catching up. Next up, uh, Batman Urban Legends number five. Similar thing, sort of an anthology series, Batman stories. I read the first one and then kind of fell behind. So, still looking forward to catching up on that. The Joker, number five. Now, this one I am current on because it's been so darn good that it's gone to the top of my pile. I didn't jump in. I picked it up from the get-go, but then I kind of waited on it. And then I had to hear John and Chandler and I think maybe even Balmori talk about how great it was. And we were already enjoying so much other DC stuff. I just jumped in and... It's, I like that it's definitely started out as more of a Gordon, a Commissioner or ex-Commissioner Gordon story at the beginning, and then the Joker and their relationship, and I believe this issue kind of goes and is telling the story of the first time that the Joker was thrown in Arkham. Yep. So, bit of fun, well, maybe fun isn't the right word, but it's been a really interesting series. Helm, Grey Castle, number three. Yep, and this is a fantasy book that's sort of D&D themed, and while I like the story well enough... The thing that I really think is cool, and I'm surprised that like the official D&D book, like the Spine of the World and all those books didn't do, is there's actual 5e compatible stats and pieces of adventures that a DM can insert into their game. So I just think items, characters, settings, there's just a whole bunch of supplement material back at the end. So honestly, even if I wasn't digging the story, I'd probably be picking it up just as kind of little bits and pieces we can throw into a future D&D game. So I'm enjoying this title for that. Yep. So we have Batman Detective number four out of six. So I will admit, I don't really know much about this. So you're going to have to take over on this I one. I think this was uh, kind of, I think Batman's over in Europe. I kind of, he's on a case that's pretty personal. Some stuff that went on in this background. That's all I know too. I know everyone that I talked to has enjoyed it. We have just a lot of craziness going on. So I've fallen behind, but I will catch up on that. Ha Ha, number six. Yep, just the regular A cover for Ha Ha. Like I said, this series, it's been hit or miss for me. I've liked, that's kind of the, one of the cool things about an anthology series like this. I don't have to like or love every issue, but some of them I've really dug. Some of them have been okay. Always at least interesting. So this one crosses over with Ice Cream Man, which I also like. So I'm, I'm looking forward to closing that out. And I, I have a feeling we'll see more of that series. For our last book of the night, we have the cardstock cover of Wonder Woman 775. Yep. And this is another one I think you and I are several issues behind on. We need to get back in because we were really enjoying it pre. Uh, now that Infinite Frontier has kind of brought everything back from Future State, I'm looking forward to getting back to this. Not my favorite. I really usually, these Wonder Woman B covers are some of my favorites. This one's okay. Yeah. The B cover was still better than the regular A. Oh, for sure. But looking forward to getting back to that one. So it was a pretty good haul this week. It's heavy on the really great covers. Yeah. So I think... What was your favorite cover overall for the week? Scotty Young Scream. I'm going to maybe go with that. I keep coming back to that. The Flash. Um, it's a tie probably for me between the Flash cover and then the Sinister Six variant. Yep, the 1 in 50. The 1 in 50. I really like that cover. That's it for this week. This was a great haul. Thanks for watching. Um, we've got some pretty cool stuff coming up. We still need to get through finishing our, our Lego shoots. We're going to do the Batman next. we got to get that done maybe this weekend. So... And one other thing we're doing this weekend, I bet you forgot. Mm, what's what's the date? Uh, the date is... Don't even try to play. It is, you know you forgot. It's the I local forgot. comic show. And we had a lot of fun uh, with our buddy Mickey at the, at the last one a few months ago. It was really your first comic show as a collector. So looking forward to going back and digging through some boxes and, and kind of meeting and greeting with other like-minded comic fans. Yeah. And I know what I'm looking for. You know what you're looking for? Yes. What? What are you looking for? I want that Amazing Spider-Man 316. I do too. Because I want, we've got First Eddie Brock, we've, we've got those two issues, a bunch of the McFarlane early stuff. I just, I want this one. I feel like we passed on it, we passed on it, we saw one that I, I was wasn't, overpriced. maybe a little, but now, I mean, the book has been hot, so maybe in retrospect we should have picked it up, but we've got our 300, we've got even the first appearance of Carnage. I feel like this is the one bigger hole we have with Venom in our collection, so that's yep. what I'm going on for. And who knows what else? There's lots of other variant covers and stuff. I'd love maybe I can find some of the other Stray Dogs covers that I don't have. There's a few out there. Yep. So, 
I think we're gonna make a video. We'll drag our camera out. Maybe we'll look for stuff. I know our buddy John from Brainstorm's gonna have a table and set up. We'll stop by and say hi to him and uh, check out whatever else is going on at the show. Yep. So I think that's it for this week. Give us one of these if you've been enjoying the content. Um, hit the notification bell to be updated. Um, whenever we post, we do at least once a week. We've been doing some D&D content. Yep, we've got another video coming soon, and we've got an idea I don't want to talk about just yet, but we've got one of our friends that's going to be doing some D&D content that I'm particularly excited about. Yep, and also subscribe. Um, again, hit the notification bell and subscribe. Be updated, um, and it really helps us out. Yeah, absolutely. So, And if you have any feedback, anything that you'd like to see, or if we're missing a book, especially if you think we're missing out on a book, there'll be another great father-son read. Those are our favorites. Please, you know, drop a comment below. Let, share your favorite book with us, and we'll give it a read. Even if it's something that's not current, if you like, could think of something that you really loved, especially that fits that father-son sort of read, let us know, and we'll check it out. We'll talk about it in a future future video. Yeah. So that's it for this week. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks for watching.